Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Dujana. Uh, this is the clay game that I was talking about earlier. Uh, I booted it up just to test, but it kicked me to the to this instead of a main menu. Uh, okay, I hit enter. I hit it a second time. What is happening? I mean, obviously, every video game since the dawn of mankind has had to put a flashing lights warning on, but, like, I guess I should extra flashing lights warning this. You know, this game started running... Hello, my name's Jack. I'm the developer of the game. I'd like to take this opportunity to say from the bottom of my heart, Thank you very much for playing. Now, this video at the beginning is randomized. I randomized, and you're only going to get it once. And you are actually quite lucky because in this one, this one I'm doing now, I'm going to tell you the meaning, the underlying meaning of the whole game. So, <laughs> close your ears if you don't want to hear. The underlying theme of the whole game is identity. Hi, identity. Now, enough dilly dallying. Let's get on with the game, shall we? Um. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Dujana. Big shout out to Jack, everyone, for giving us a... What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Apparently, 76% of my CPU is being used by right now. Okay. Let's start then. Wads or arrows, uh, space or X interact, E for menu. Game pads are supported. Oh! What the? Find your loved ones, get the key to your duck. <laughs> okay, let's remember what Jack told us. The theme of this game is identity. Let's save. Let's resume. Our sprite is cool, I guess. I should have clicked on that, I, th I think. You're in your house. Husband and daughter are making brunch. There's a smell coming from the corner. Hey, Papa. Yes, Ashna, darling. Who is going to die first, you or Mama? Well, I guess I don't know. If Mama dies first, we'll get a new one. <laughs> no, he will not. Laugh track. I love you, Mama, but I'm gonna need someone to help with my homework if you aren't around. <laughs> Let's concentrate on preparing dinner now, shall we? Ha ha ha. Papa, darling, how come you're taller than Grandma, but she is older than you? Have you fed your hamster? Ha <laughs> ha. No, Papa.
Papa, hey Papa, hey. How do I know you are real? I think you're gonna have to just trust me on this one. What about Mama and Kaya? Maybe we're not real. Don't say that! Talking of Kaya, have you fed him? I'll go check. I like the, um, in the background, the pause does show you what you're doing, but. Ashna, Mama, your hamster's dead. Dijana. <laughs> what? Okay, guys, I get it. Clay means that you want to make a weird game. I've seen The Neverhood, I've seen Hylix. Not here, Papa. Oh, does Dad have to pick out where you have to bury this fucking hamster? Not here, Papa. I found this. You're looking for a place to bury Kaya the dead hamster. Here seems a fine sight. What do you think, Ashta? A good spot for Kaya's last resting place? Good spot. Papa, will we be, will we be with him again? Will those that we loved be brought back together? I don't know for sure. His plan for the creatures, sweet east. I believe we were the ones being tested here, not the animals, so I have a feeling we shall meet with Kaya again in time. We can spend our whole lives looking for answers, only to realize that we sometimes have to make our own. Kaya be an angel? Papa. I read that all angels are made from trembling shafts of light with no free will. The more I learn about science and philosophy, the more it seems that we are all angels. Uh, huh? I'm gonna make sure that you all can see this. But I gotta bust out my old friend Task Manager to do it. Look at this thing. Look at it, it's weird. Alright, I'm going back here. They are what? The girl? Not perfect. Perfect. Ha ha ha. Nothing be. I will say, I feel like this game is more, like, honest about being Clay than Hylix is. Take, take. Is that Morse code, maybe? Oh, honey, I'm so sorry that your husband and daughter were, like, taken by that spider monster. Mama, it hurts. I keep telling myself it's just a matter of sensation. I can't hide from it, though. It blots out the sun. Will they ever return? It's almost been a week now. Oh, I hate the eyes. This is a simple explanation, and they'll turn up soon enough. Mama, in my mind, I've lost them and found a thousand times over. How much longer? Perhaps Ted has seen something. Maybe he can lend you the keys to his old, old mining mech. Oil mining mech. Perhaps. Is this, is this Grandma? Going to be on TV, Mama. Perhaps revenge is what I seek. What can I say to you? Once you have sought the path of revenge, there's no way to stop. Should I hide what I intend? A moth does not care when she sees a flame. Consciousness of pain, Mama. It's keeping me alive. Uh, I noticed that this, I think this is Mama's sprite, is drawn. And there's some more stuff in the background here that's drawn and is not clay. This appears to be a uh, marker. Uh, 
I've never been so worried. Y'all are. I wish there was more I could do or say. But her sprite appears to be photographed clay. Helpless. Maybe neighbor Ted has seen something. Where the shot? All right, we're looping. Jana, we've all been very worried. Is there anything I can do to help? Hey, Ted. I'm pulling my hair out here. Would it be possible to borrow duck? Yes, of course, of course. Take the keys. Take them for as long as you need. So the mech is named Duck. I wonder why everything is here on a checklist. You would think that that would maybe... Arcade tokens, what the... You would think that that would maybe be a spoiler, but then again, maybe it doesn't matter. To the west, the desert continues. The intervening forces are stationed to the south. To the north and the east, you get to the world map. Thank you, needlessly creepy desertman. <sighs> okay, cool. They actually made the sprite not ambidextrous. can even hear the guy take let me oh god okay let me turn this up so you can just listen to this like American voice as well. All right, let's turn that down. What the hell is this game? <laughs> I do not know what it is. Let's say I'm getting weird stuff happening to my Ah, so I can go on foot here. Okay. What the hell? Oh, an oasis. The fact that you can hear the man making these sound effects stop to take a breath is pretty... I don't know how to put it. Shall we say next gen? It's always nice to find the limits and boundaries of a world. 
Thank you, Meta Man. His arms appear to be a doorstop and maybe a little trowel on the end. Or maybe a lollipop? His head looks like a matchbox. His other arm looks like a marker. I wonder why this game was made. How do I control this? Oh god. What was the point of getting the keys to duck then? This is too flagell. Welcome to Corneria. That lady has white trousers on and it looks like she sat on chocolate. It looks like poo, haha. Don't you find walking in circles makes you very ill? Oh no, it helps me to think. It's my day off, and I like thinking in my spare time. What have you chosen to think about? Well, I remember once reading about a particular performance of a Shakespearean play. It may have been Othello, I'm not sure. One of the actors tripped over a prop during a murder scene, and the audience laughed uproariously. This stripped the scene of all pathos, as you can imagine. The writer co cogitated madly on the inexplicable rudeness he had just witnessed, and then concluded with a hint of sadness how it is true that the audience ultimately seeks to be entertained as is their nature. It is their nature. Therefore, they will find entertainment even if it is in improper places. As with all quotes in books, none can prove their worth until they bear some direct resemblance with the present. This is usually when you're actually living and not holding a book, of course. Unless you were reading a book on inspirational reading, that is. I must have read this bit about the rude audience two years ago. And yesterday it found its way back to me as I was taking a moment to think fondly of the boy who sleeps on the floor in the room next to mine. He has nice eyes. It feels nice to privately and deeply care about someone as nice and good for our well-being as having a bowl of warm soup on a cold day. But I have a fiancé. This is in fact the very reason I'm here. For I'm earning money to help pay for our honeymoon. We're going to Vienna. What, the Earth exists? Like, I know you mentioned Shakespeare, but like, Vienna is real? But oh, I forget this sometimes. The boy who sleeps on the floor next door is so kind to me. I once described him to, through gestures about how hot it is where I came from. And thereafter, he would cut out pictures of sunny destinations from newspapers and stick them on the fridge. He pointed to them and made a roof with his hands. Home, I think he said to me. I haven't the heart to convey to him that... is nothing like Hawaii. So do we live in... Is that just supposed to be, like, Iraq or Iran? It's four letters? It occurred to me that as I gazed out of the window like a privileged Victorian adolescent, perhaps I was like this audience. Although instead I, of being here to be entertained, I am here to love. I will find love in improper places because it's my nature. It's hopelessly out of my control. I cannot bear to imagine what my husband would do if he knew of my fondness for others. There are hideous consequences in my country for adultery. But why do I feel like I am getting away with a crime I have not committed? I do not feel at all like an adulterer. I am not doing anyone harm. I love my fiancé too. Is this game going to get weird and anti-Islamic? He has a nice laugh. Sometimes I think that people are as possessive as and as paranoid about love as money. Individuals strive to have it all, yet there is conceivably enough to go around for everyone. 
I don't know, maybe that's my communist ancestry speak. What the fuck is this game about? <laughs> but how can I help it? I also read once that it that to be able to love so well is a skill. Something people are not graced with at birth. And as I was watching the boy cut out yet another line of girls in hula skirts, I thought of this quote, and of how much I wanted to emulate his skill of loving well. It was as if I was watching a virtuoso violinist and desperate to start learning myself. Because I am unspeakably touched and happy in these temporary moments when he presents me with a jagged cutout and I stick it to the fridge using what magnets we have left, usually a cat of some kind. And these moments I want to I want to do is hold him close to me in a warm and generous embrace that is abnormal in its duration. Oh well, I suppose it doesn't matter to anyone but me. And as my mother always said, especially when times were bad, as long as we don't speak a truth, it still has the possibility of being untrue. If we don't speak a truth, it still might be untrue. I... So as long as it remains between you and me, it needn't be true at all. I shall continue to privately feel love for the boy who sleeps on the floor next door. and I shall return to my husband to openly love him, then on. I wonder if I am alone in my thinking. I will never know, of course. Oh, well. I heard there are many violinists in Vienna. Relating to her uh, honeymoon in Vienna and her comparison to watching a violinist play and wanting to learn. Okay. Can't interact with that. We are the sisters. You may have heard of us. People come to us. Beat, beat, beat. The heart is wrinkled. People come to us with their sobbing grievances. Shall we say we listen? Beat, beat, beat. The military kill children who throw stones. Perhaps you would like us to soothe your grievances with the military station in the south of the desert? What the? It is something we can do. Who is going to help with the homework if you aren't around? Come back to us once you have located the military. Bring a wound to a knife fight. Live blighted, girl. Live. For the primitive, there's the one thing, not a preference. Like an artist, our creeds. Is this gonna. In humor, activism. There's the one thing Like lovers I open my mouth Like an artist There is something Have you ever Okay Is this going to be about American imperialism in the Middle East? His teacher says, let's try our best again tomorrow. I don't like the sound of people eating, specifically crisps. You mean chips. This person shares the opinion. When I enter a car, I don't think of car crashes. When I find my seat on the plane until I disembark, the fear of disaster. We went to see a performance artist once, before Ashna was born. The audience stood expectantly. I remember the gallery had glossy gray floor tiles. The performer started off almost like a children's show host. She would make a gesture, then yell, Hip hip hooray. That was all she said, hip hip hooray. Then she got out some props, a bowl of flour, a balloon, and a violin bow. Each time she bought out something, hip hip hooray. She cradled the balloon and danced, hip hip hooray. And she threw the balloon in the air and whisked the bowl of flowers, stopping to catch the balloon and repeat, repeating until all the flowers on the floor. 
Hip hip hooray. She got more and more frenetic. She played an invisible violin standing on a chair, really screaming her line over and over again. Then she sat down and softly rocked the balloon, gently stroked, stroking would-be hair from an imaginary face. Very quietly, hip hip hooray, hip hip hooray, hip hip hooray, hip hip hooray, hip hip hooray. I looked at my husband and saw tears in his eyes. Dujna remembered their first real argument was at an exhibition opening. On all the walls of the gallery were shopping lists the artist had collected from a year living in London. Again, London is real. Uh, the artist had visited supermarkets in her local area and shoppers had donated their list to her. There was a really positive feeling in the gallery, which Dujna didn't feel a part of. Her husband seemed to be spending hours studying the lists. He even seemed to find some funny. This annoyed her. How could someone find a shopping list funny? I think it would be good if we could add our own lists, Dujuna commented. He looked at her in disdain and called her a fucking idiot. Well, that's not right. Don't you understand a fucking thing? Okay, so these do repeat. They always seemed to be out of step when they visited the gallery. Sometimes Dujna would say one piece while he was already on the next room. Sometimes it was the opposite. The gallery often was often an unpleasant experience, but they kept going, I guess. The canvas is blank, well, almost blank. There's a smell of turpentine and an idea that there was once an oil painting. Dujna remembered something her husband had said to her after they took an installation down and repainted the walls of the gallery white. In this room is... In this room is no longer a functioning artwork. So then they went to the gallery and then they had a fight there. Behind me is the club. This uh, looks like my house. Oh, maybe I do live here. Maybe this is my house. And it's right next to the gallery that we spend so much time at. That makes sense. And then maybe mom just lives back in the village. You're about to stay down. What can I say? Sounds like music my dad listens to. The awareness of death manifests profoundly in young teens. I must be a young teenager then. I wish you'd told us sooner about her illness. This game's weird, right? You know, I'll be honest, I don't... It's our third music club. Okay, I mentioned imp uh, American imperialism and that this game might take place in Iraq, but, like, are these garments supposed to be, like, burqas or hijabs or that sort of thing? I feel like I'm freaking England, you cobs. A guard at the Arm Amgue Hodgkin's generation plant told me that someone had been pinching sand from the work site. Each day the guard would, s would come... Each day the guard would see the man come dressed in a high-vis vest and then... Afterward, leave the wheelbarrow full of sand. The guard confronted him one day. Oi, he said, where are you off to with all that sand? Guy kicked up a fuss. 
like butter wouldn't melt, tipped out the sand and sauntered off with a wheelbarrow. A few days later, it turned out he hadn't been stealing sand, he'd been taking their wheelbarrows. <laughs> Okay. He wears a t-shirt stating you don't deserve anything in life. I'll be honest, the developer of the game, Jack was his name, I think, just straight up coming to me and being like, the theme of this game. The app says the baby's the size of a blueberry. How big is that? You get some pretty big blueberries. Ah, oh, the lady must be pregnant. Why on earth would anyone dress a cat up like a rabbit? Because funny. You've never, you've never, like, put your fingers on a cat's head and been like, whoop. Um, I'm gonna cut this episode. I, I'll be honest, I don't know if I have been having a good time. <laughs> this game's weird, but, uh, it's interesting at the very least. Like, it's not a, it's not a bad game as far as I know. It might end up weird, but... This is uh, Dujana. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. Uh, playing another clay game.